Hi, my name is Theo Bischoff, and today I will be making a video to show you the basic components of playing the tuba. These basic components include assembling and disassembling the instrument, making sure you take it out of the case the right way, also some basic maintenance to make sure everything stays working as you continue to play, a good tone, how to make sure that you're getting a nice sound out of the instrument, and lastly, you're going to learn the first three notes for the tuba. So the first piece of learning the tuba that we are going to start with today is going to be taking the tuba out of the case the right way. So as you can see, I have my tuba in its case right here on the ground so it won't fall down or break or anything. And we're just going to make sure that the bottom of the case is on the ground like it is right now so nothing falls out once we open it. Uh, basically, you just undo the lashes right over here and lift it up. Make sure some of these cases open all the way up to 180 degrees so just make sure that the case isn't banging around and smashing onto the floor. That will reduce a lot of unnecessary damage. Okay, so the tube is a big instrument. It's going to be hard to take out with one hand so make sure that you have two hands totally on the tube while you take it out. And then make sure you're always holding the tuba with two hands because if you hold it with one hand, you might drop it, and that's how you get in trouble. So, make sure you always have the tuba lying on its back, right here, and never on the bell, which is right here. If you have the tuba sitting on the bell, like this, on the floor, you're just asking for it to be broken or knocked over, and you don't want that. So, the next part of putting the tuba together is grabbing the mouthpiece from inside the case and putting the mouthpiece on the tuba. A lot of people think it's best to take the to take the mouthpiece and shove it in to the lead pipe, which is this piece right here, as far as it could go. This is not a good idea though, as if you try to shove the mouthpiece in the lead pipe, it could get stuck. And you don't want that because that makes it impossible to put back in the case. So what you want to do is just put it in just firmly enough so it stays. You can easily take it out. Everything works. It's nice. If for some reason that the mouthpiece gets stuck in the lead pipe, do not try to take a wrench and yank it out because that could damage the lead pipe and lead pipes are relatively expensive. You don't want to go spending money where you don't have to. The best thing to do is take the take the tuba to your band director and to have them take out the mouthpiece themselves, either with a, a robo wrench, which only tightens around just enough to grip onto the thing it's pulling, or with a special device that pulls mouthpieces out. So basically, once you've got your mouthpiece in, you're all ready to go, it's all set up, and that's how you put a tuba together. So now that we have the tuba out of the case, the next thing you're going to want to talk about is the proper playing position for while you're holding the tuba. The first thing you want to do before you even touch the horn is make sure that you're sitting the right way. So you make sure you want to have your knees bent, your feet flat on the floor, so you have a nice base to hold on to the tuba. Now you can probably see that I'm hunching over a little bit. This is what some call the linebacker playing position. Because it's like in football when a linebacker gets ready to go. They have their shoulders forward, ready to go. and It's nice for football, but it isn't really nice for uh, playing a brass instrument. So the easiest fix for linebacker position is to raise the stand, which I'm going to do right now that my camera is on. And already I'm sitting much more straight, you could probably tell right away. So just raising the stand, it'll force the students to sit up so they can see properly. And that's how you want to sit and stay for playing the tuba. Now you can take the tuba and you can start to get a hold onto it. Right here, we have a thumb ring. So all you have to do, take your right hand, 
thumb through the thumb ring, and then you have easy access to the piston valves that are on the tuba. Your other hand, your left hand, you want to support the tuba so it's not falling around while you're playing. So you're just going to have your left hand hold on to this piece right here. Right there, so you have a sturdy base. You can hold on to the tuba, everything's set. And right now you're ready to learn your first three notes of the tuba. It's hard to get a noise to come out of the tuba when you don't know exactly what you're doing. So before we go on to the first three notes of the tuba, we are going to work on tone quality and how to get an actual sound out of the instrument. And to work on that, the only thing you need is the mouthpiece. You don't even need the tuba for this part. The way to get a nice sound out of any brass instrument is to practice buzzing before you actually play. Buzzing is holding the, just the mouthpiece and playing through as you would uh, the instrument. How do you do that? Well, I'll show you. The first thing you want to do is get your mouth ready. The way I like to set up the proper embouchure, embouchure is how you have your mouth set while you play, is to flap your lips like this. Some people say it sounds like a horse, some people say it sounds like a helicopter. I don't really know, everybody just knows how to go like this. That's the sound you want to start to make, but then you want it to die down a little bit. So you basically want to have the space in between your lips get smaller and smaller. So it goes like this. <laughs> That sound right there, that's the sound you want to get through the buzz. What I just did right there, buzzing without the mouthpiece or the instrument, that's called free buzzing. Regular buzzing is doing free buzzing. Just like that. That is how you buzz. The tuba is not an especially tricky instrument because it has... A very low register and originally a lot of first-time players won't be able to buzz all the way down they need to so something I noticed works really well is when you're buzzing you heard how my sound dropped out after a while I'll do it again so what I like to do is I like to take my pinky and put it at the end of the mouthpiece right there to add some resistance like you would with the tuba. So it goes from, your uh, your buzzing goes from sounding like this to sounding like this. Which is much better. One more thing I want to say about uh, getting a good tone out of the tuba before we move on is that a lot of players instinctively want to puff out their cheeks to get a lower sound and go That's not the best way to do it. The, the way I like to explain it is to pretend your jaw right here is like an elevator going up and down. So basically the lower the note you want to play or the lower your jaw goes and the higher the note the higher the jaw goes. So basically it works like this. I'll go this way so you can see. Just You want to watch my jaw to see it go up and down as my notes go up and down. It was really subtle change but if you you will hear a difference once we put the mouthpiece on the horn. And basically, once you get the mouthpiece on the horn and you do everything I just showed you, you can get a decent tone out of the instrument. So now that we know how to take the tuba out of the case, we know how to hold the tuba, we know how to sit while we're holding the tuba, 
and we know how to make a noise with the tuba, now we are going to learn the first three notes, which is B flat, C, and D. This is how we're going to do it. First, we're going to warm up a little bit by we're going to do a free buzz, just like before. Then we're going to buzz with the mouthpiece so we could hear it. And then, moment of truth, we put the mouthpiece on and then we play. Just like that. And that's how you're going to get a nice B flat out of the tuba. Something you want to watch out for while you're playing is the firmness of your corners over here. If your corners get loose, it can make a really gargled sound, and this is what that's supposed to sound like. What you want to do is just keep the corners nice and tight. Everything else should be relaxed. Keep the corners tight, and that should be a good sound. Nice, just like that. So now we're going to learn the fingering, okay? With the four valve tuba, there's some alternate fingerings you could use. You got your B flat is open, so you don't have to push any valves down while you're playing it. Then when you want C, you can press one and three down to play C, the first and third valves. This is first, second, third, fourth. You can, one and three will make C. But what you wanted, what I prefer to do, is doing just the fourth valve. That'll make a C too. There's many alternate fingerings for the same note. So we have our B. And then we have our C. So we go we can go B flat to C. Just like this. Ready? And then to add D onto there, it's going to be the first and second valves pushed down. So that's going to sound like this. So B flat, C, and D all together should come out sounding like this. So now you have the first three notes of the tuba. Let's do it one more time. So now you have you know how to play the tuba, at least basically. So the last thing we're going to talk about is how to care for your tuba and how to make sure you can keep it at the best possible condition for the longest time. So basically the most common way that we clean the inside of the tuba is by oiling the valves. Now not only does oiling the valves keep the inside clean, but it also helps make it easy to push down the valves just like that. Otherwise, they could get stuck. So the way you want to oil the valves is by unscrewing this piece right here. It should be fairly easy to unscrew. You just unscrew it almost, and there, yes. So this is how you're going to do pretty much all piston valve instruments. And you're going to take it out like this. This is what you want. After you take this out, you're going to oil the metallic part right here with the valve oil. All over, you can be pretty liberal with the application. And then once you're done with one valve, you go ahead and you put it right back in and screw it back in. The reason we do one valve at a time is because if you put the first valve into the second valve spot, there won't be any noise. And the purpose of the instruments is to make noise, so we should put the valves all in the correct spots. One of the most important things you do not want to do when you oil a valve 
is put your oil that we were talking about before in over here in these holes where'd you go in these holes right here because this is where all the dirt and grime and gross stuff falls to because of gravity it goes from the top down to the bottom uh -huh. and if you put the oil in here and you the oil goes down this way the oil is going to get to the valves but so is all the crud and garbage so make sure you put the oil on through here one valve at a time all the way down to keep your instrument clean the other thing you can do to clean your instrument is about twice a year you're going to want to take your entire instrument apart you're going to if you have a bathtub you want to fill the bathtub with warm water and you want to use uh, a little bit of mild non-abrasive soap and you're basically gonna clean out the entire tuba so you just want to like basically give it a little bath you don't have to do that too often that's just a once again once once or twice every year to keep everything clean and working well